Today we send a clear message to Speaker Cameron Sexton that the people will not allow his, his crimes against democracy to happen without challenge. Yeah. The people of Nashville have spoken today through their council members and democracy. We stand for the vision of a multiracial democracy. Democracy is, our, our, is the vision we're offering to this body, this building that has forgotten it. And so we're waiting now for the minutes from the city council meeting, but I want to thank everybody for coming out, the thousands of people from across the state and across this nation who showed up. Because this is not about one person, it's not about one position, but it's about a movement of people power to restore the soul and heart of what this building should represent, and that is democracy. And so I want to thank you all for being here today, particularly the young people who are the heartbeat of this movement. It was students taking, walking out of classes and taking to this capital that led us into the well that day, calling for common sense gun laws. And the first thing I do when I walk into this building as a representative is to continue that call for common sense gun legislation. <laughs> Secondly, we are calling on House Speaker Cameron Sexton to resign as Speaker of the House. He is an enemy of democracy and the people have spoken. And so we will continue to speak up and resist and show up because this is the, the rebirth, the, the resurrection of a movement in Tennessee that's going to keep going, not just today, but in the days ahead. We will continue to show up and birth a new South because right here in Nashville, we've had movements before led by young people that transformed this nation and it's our time again. Four together, not one step back. Justin, Justin, what has this meant to you to have the support? Justin, what has this meant to you? Sorry. Have this kind of support. What has this meant to you? It just shows that our movement is bigger than one person, that it's thousands of people from across the nation and literally across the world who've shown up today to stand in solidarity with the crime that happened here in Tennessee. And people are resisting, people are showing up, people are calling us to act. And the, the decision to expel us yesterday was not the final decision. I mean, excuse me, on Thursday, it was not the final decision. That they try to crucify democracy, but you see here a resurrection of a movement, a multiracial movement for democracy happening in Tennessee. With my brother Pearson. Oh, yes. Pearson. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you again. Great to see you again. What, what does it say to see this happen? Yes! Democracy still works, and people power always win. What is, what's the joint message that y'all want to send to the to the nation right now who's watching this about maybe not giving up on a movement? It, it is never a good idea to give up on a movement led morally right. It's never a good idea to give up on a movement led by people that look like this who are committed to the ideals, but not just committed in heart, but in body and spirit. And they'll show up for the movement. They'll protest for the movement. They'll fight for the movement. And so to anyone who has doubted the South, anyone who's doubted the power of Tennesseans to advocate for an end to gun violence, anybody who's doubted the movement to end assault weapons, anybody who's doubted the movement, here's your answer. The movement still lives. I said a couple of things. Hello? Thank you. They thought that they could turn our democracy into their mobocracy. They thought that they could turn the people's chamber and the people's house into their own place of pontificating of a status quo that harms and kills us. They thought that if they could expel the voice of the people, that the people would not rise. They thought that if they could kick out Representative Justin Jones, that he would never again be Representative Justin Jones. But they were wrong. And today, what we see is that having a moral center matters. Having a vision for this state and this country that says justice is possible matters. Having a voice and a vision in the State House that will choose to even get expelled in order that the vision that each and every one of us hold within our hearts of a pluralistic, multiracial, multi ethnic, multi economic democracy might live is way more powerful than the NRA or the gun lobbyists or anybody who told us we just need to shut up and sit down. 
because indeed what the Nashville Metro Council has done with a unanimous decision in sending Brother Representative Justin Jones back into his calling as an elected official is that justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. It will happen. You might try and silence it. You might try and expel it. But the people's power will not be stopped. The people's power will not be stopped. The people's power will not be stopped. Because this is what democracy looks like. Hey, Wolf, you heard the powerful words from the two members, and obviously they are wrapping up right now. We are told the plan right now is to go inside the building. They're waiting for the minutes from the city council. Once they receive those minutes, then they will march toward that capital and go back inside. And Jones plans to get his seat back. So this is all happening right now. i got to show you this crowd. If you look back this direction, as far as the eye can see, you can see people going all the way down the stairs. So they're planning to do a moment of silence. Um, I'm gonna for the for the mass shooting that happened in Louisville today. So that's what they're gonna mark this moment. It's all about gun control. All right, Ryan. I want you to stay with us. I also want to bring in our chief national affairs correspondent, Jeff Zeleny, who's watching this very, very closely. Uh, Jeff, uh, uh, how your reaction first of all to what we just heard? Well, look, it's extraordinary, uh, really, the speed in which the the Nashville uh, Council uh, unanimously. Uh, sent uh, former Representative Jones back to his seat temporarily. This is a two-step process. Uh, uh, he's going to have to run for his seat again. But, Wolf, what it shows is that he now is uh, something of a hero uh, to the uh, gun control movement, to youth activists, of course, in uh, Tennessee, but indeed across the country as well. So it really raises the question of what was this all for anyway? What did the uh, speaker of the Tennessee House and his fellow Republicans uh, do last week? And was that in the best interest, in their best interest? Uh, it certainly has not moved uh, forward the conversation about you know, this epidemic of gun violence in the country. In neighboring Kentucky, we saw again today, of course, another shooting. So this, of course, the politics of this are very important. It shows that the uh, youth activism uh, is alive and well, and this movement of uh, of people standing up from across the spectrum, young and old, uh, really pushing for uh, the elected officials to do something on guns is going to continue regardless of what the, the elected officials do in terms of decorum or whatnot. So it really just resumes perhaps the conversation about about the guns, but you, you know we should be honest here. It is unlikely that any individual shooting will have an impact. It's going, it's going to take a collective uh, movement here, and I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this right in the middle of this. Yeah, uh, Jeff, stand by for a second, Ryan. If you can hear me, I'm, I'm anxious to get your perspective. You're there on the scene for us. How remarkable is it for a state representative to be expelled and then reinstated by his city just a few days later? Well, when you hear about some of the state representatives who weren't kicked out before for offenses that are far greater than the ones that happened here, you understand why so many people here were upset. Um, I remember Jeff Zeleny a few days ago talking about John Lewis and how this kind of ties together. These young men are taking examples from John Lewis and Dr. King, and they're using them. It's one of the reasons why they wanted to walk up John Lewis and Dr. King uh, Street on the way up here. They are le uh, leaning heavily on the old civil rights movement. But I can tell you, as you see everybody right now, as they're getting ready to go in, we were just told the minutes from the city council have arrived, Wolf. So now this walk is getting ready to take place where all these people plan to escort the representative back into the people's house. I don't know if I've ever think seen anything play out like this, but you can see this groundswell of emotion as people start walking this way. So we're going to try to catch up to the front. That way we can be there when he walks in the front door. Not sure if he'll be met by any side of security. Was there any procedure that has to go on? Uh, no one's really ever experienced this before. And you saw that vote happen so quickly there in the city hall. All right, Ryan, go ahead. Uh, catch up with them. We'll get back to you shortly. Uh, uh, Jeff, while I still have you, did this, uh, and you seem to suggest it did, did this whole procedure actually backfire 
on Republicans? Did they essentially give these two state representatives an even bigger platform and a much greater following? I think they absolutely did and really shined a light on the fact that uh, the uh, Tennessee legislature is one of many bodies that simply has not even debated or heard uh, solutions or discussions on guns. So, yes, in the short term, without a doubt, they have given a bigger platform and also really shined a light on the reality of racism that still exists, on the reality of, uh, of the, uh, you know, essentially uh, saying to young activists that uh, you don't belong here, we're going to handle things in our own way. Uh, the speed in which this happened, this was just a few days ago last week when they were expelled. Of course, they're coming back in. But, Wolf, what we're seeing, again, is yet another example of this urban and rural divide, uh, this red and blue divide in the country. So for the politics of this, I'm not sure, sadly, this is going to solve anything in terms of advancing an actual discussion on solving the underlying issue of guns and murders in this country.